Hello viewers, we are starting a new series of lecture. We will begin with basics in radiology. Our first lecture will be how to read or interpret a chest x-ray. Our educator today is Professor Rajul Rastogi. He is a renowned radiologist and holds various national and international awards. So first of all, while interpreting the chest radiographs, we should all remember that we should not just have a tunnel vision we should have a wide horizon, which means we have to look at the lung fields, but all the other structures which are all around the lung fields, including the mediastinum, hilum, and all the other structures, including bony cage and soft tissues, because that might give us an indirect indication of some disease and something else. Now, first of all, the main radiograph that is often taken in the day-to-day -day practice is a chest PA radiograph where the X-rays enter through the posterior aspect of the patient and exits through the anterior aspect. And this is the radiograph that is commonly we see. So first of all, try and look at the lung fields and we have to look at the lung fields zone by zone. For example, we know that from the apex to the upper border of the second rib is the upper zone. Then from this, upper border of the second rib to the upper border of the fourth rib it is the mid zone and the rest is the lower zone so we have to compare the upper zone with the upper zone on the other side the middle with the middle and the lower with the lower this helps us in understanding which side is abnormal after the lung fields we have to look at the mediastinum we have to look at the hilar shadows and then we have to look at the configuration of the cardiac shadow and finally we look at the cardiothoracic ratio which is nothing but the ratio of the maximum dimension of the cardiac shadow to the maximum inner thoracic diameter and finally we should never forget to see the periphery of the chest films in the form of the chest wall bones and also the upper part of the abdomen so we are used to seeing the pa radiographs but nowadays we uncommonly see the lateral radiographs and we rarely get requisition for lateral chest radiograph but believe me if you start seeing the lateral radiographs many a times the problem gets solved just by getting this radiograph instead of the cct thorax because cct thorax has a limitation of availability at the peripheral places and secondly the expertise is also limited so how to look at the lateral chest radiograph we'll be seeing in the subsequent slides but remember whenever we see a opacity on the right side on a pa view we should get a right lateral view of the chest similarly we see the lesion on the left side we should get a left lateral view of the chest because it means that the left side will be touching the plate and this will be clearer if a lateral view is taken now how we interpret the lateral view of the radiograph we commonly see these lucencies which are round or oval these represent the bronchus and the bronchi which are lobar or maybe at times the main bronchus also if we are seeing a air lucency and we are seeing a white line which is bounding the lucency it means it is the wall of the bronchus so in this case it is just the posterior wall of the trachea and this is the anterior wall of the trachea there is some tubular structure which is opaque and lies in front of the tracheal shadow and we all know that the vessels run with the airways and therefore these are the uh, pulmonary vessels pulmonary arterial branches then there may be some curved structures which may be seen in between the lucencies again these are opaque structures or bright structures and they are curved they are nothing but the branches of the pulmonary arteries and we can also see the smaller branches which are going to the lobes now if we see a bigger curved structure which is going right from the top of the radiograph and posteriorly to the spine it is nothing but the arch of the aorta and this is the most prominent structure that we can easily identify now look at this radiograph we can see two lucencies 
we understand these are airways or the main bronchi or the lobar bronchus and we see something in front as a opacity but it is not tubular just like the vessel the normal vessel will be widest at the hilum and then as it goes away from the hilum it will be thinner in caliber but here what we see it doesn't fit into the pattern of the vessel so what else can be there at the hilum it is usually the lymph nodes or the lymph node masses so if we see the pa view of this patient we understand that there are bilaterally symmetrical hilar nodal masses but if we would have taken this x ray alone we cannot be sure that this mass which is apparently at the hilum is lying at the hilum or anterior or posterior to it but when we look at this lateral radiograph we are 100% sure that this is at the hilar perihilar location and it has to be nothing but the nodal mass so in this way a correlation or a corroboration of the pa view of the chest with the lateral view of the chest we can reach to the conclusion instead of directly going to the cct thorax now look at some technical factors whenever we are interpreting the chest pa radiograph we should always look at the eq distance between the spinous process of the spine and the medial ends of the clavicle so if there is a distant gap of more than 1 cm it's fine otherwise we have to consider that patient rotated with respect to the radiograph so if the medial end of the left clavicle is away from the spine we call it left sided rotation and if the right clavicle has its medial end away from the spinous process we call it right sided rotation and why it is important see here this is a patient with a right sided rotation and the heart appears of this size but when we see the radiograph of the same patient with a left sided rotation we see that the cardiothoracic ratio is increased which means that if there is a right sided rotation the heart size is smaller than what should have been and in the left sided rotation it apparently appears larger similarly the posture in which the pa view of the chest has been taken normally it is taken in erect standing position and sometimes in sitting posture as well so here what we can see this pa view of the lung of the right lung in the erect posture shows radiolucency in the upper part but there is some ground glass haziness or haziness in the lower part but when the same radiograph of the patient was taken in the supine posture we see that the haziness is seen right from the apex to the base of the lungs and we see some lucens radio opacity along the peripheral wall of the chest so it was because of the layering of the pleural effusion that was seen and it was all around the chest in the posterior part so this caused a homogeneous opacification so the lung appears much more severely diseased than what it is actually is similarly the lordotic view the lordotic view is done for the apices of the lung so if you compare the normal pa view of this patient you can see the apices are well seen on a lordotic view but it is overlapped by the medial ends of the clavicles on both the sides so whenever the opacity is lying in the apical region of the lung and there is some query whether it is a lesion or just a accompanying shadow so then we can get the apical lordotic view which tells us beautifully that whether the apices of the lung are diseased or not but this is not meant for lower lung fields because here what you can see it is much hazier than what is seen on a pa radiograph similarly if the patient is kyphotic the appearance of the lung fields will change because kyphosis leads to expiratory phases of the films and hence at times we are not able to see the diseased part of the lung if it is present in the lower lung field so hence we should interpret this in a patient with kyphosis very important part whenever we are taking a chest radiograph we should look for optimal inspiration by the patient and how do we do that if this sixth rib anteriorly 
crosses the right dome of the diaphragm in the mid clavicular line then it is considered to be optimal respiration inspiration however anything less than this for example in this patient we can see just the fourth rib cutting the anterior end of the uh, crossing the right dome anteriorly so what we see is there is a hazy left lower lobe right lower lobe so this causes a confusion in a symptomatic patient who has fever or the uh, pneumonia is suspected so whenever we are looking at the basis we should always look whether the inspiration is optimal or not similarly the body habitus the body habitus is very very important because we can see that in this sumo who has uh, a very heavy body habitus we can see the lungs are not that clear on a routine chest x ray and it appears hazy so if we don't have information about the body habitus of this individual we would think that the patient has some disease and the heart appears much larger because of the posture our next lecture will be identifying basic pathological signs in a x ray chest